In this presentation, we are going to discuss natural fractures and how they pertain to gas shales. The network of natural fractures in shale is very important in the production of hydrocarbons in shale, and they are especially important in the fracking process. We will consider the basics of the characteristics of natural fractures and their origin, their relationship to the accumulation of gas, and their relationship to the production of gas. What is a gas shale? Shales are fine-grained sedimentary rocks containing a high percentage of silt, clay minerals, and some organic matter. Shale gas reservoirs usually have extremely low permeability and pore size is usually in the range of nanometers. Pores are poorly connected and therefore the permeability is in the range of nanodarcy. The production of hydrocarbons from shale has dramatically increased over the last decade. This shale boom has been driven by the advent of two relatively new technologies, directional drilling and hydraulic fracturing. These technologies, combined with high oil prices, have allowed for the economical production of oil and gas from shales. Shale gas may be stored as free gas in natural fractures in intergranular porosity as gas sorbed onto kerogen and clay particle surfaces or as gas dissolved in kerogen and bitumen. The production of gas from shale would not be possible without natural fractures because 1. gas is stored in them and 2. gas migrates and accumulates through them. The Barnett Shale is very common in the southwest United States and it is presumed that open natural fractures are specifically critical to the Barnett gas production. The shale that is relevant to the state of Louisiana is known as the Haynesville Shale. More than 28,000 shale gas wells have been drilled in the United States since the early 1800s. Well completion practices employ hydraulic fracturing technology to access the natural fracture system and create new fractures. However, less than 10% of the shale gas wells are completed without some form of reservoir stimulation. The most relevant type of natural fractures to petroleum engineers are those that are open, meaning they are hollow and fluid can flow through them. The other type of natural fractures which are most common are those that are filled with calcite and they are sealed off. Natural fractures seem to be ubiquitous in shale gas plays. It is often said that their presence is one of the most critical factors in defining an economic or prospective shale gas play. A common view is to believe that gas can only be produced when extensive networks of natural fractures exist. Natural fractures in shale come in all shapes and sizes. Open fractures can be as wide as 50 millimeters but the ones that are sealed with calcite are usually less than 0.05 millimeters. They are usually very long and tortuous and have high length width aspect ratios of usually greater than 1000 to 1. They are very steep and the dominant trend is west to northwest. Natural gas fractures are commonly found in most shale gas plays. Shale is a very tight rock so it is believed that the natural fractures in the shale are vital to an economic shale gas play. To help demonstrate this concept, we designed a simple experiment on a larger scale. We obtained a porous material to represent the shale formation without natural fractures. Water was poured into the material and we observed the results. Shale can have porosity, but without natural fractures, the permeability will be an issue for flow. Notice that the porous material is able to hold the fluid, but there is no flow. Next, we took the same porous material and created our own fractures to represent natural fractures in shale. Water was poured into the material and the results were observed as such. Gas and shale will flow in the conduits of the natural fractures. These open fractures in shale can be filled with minerals, which can be detrimental to production. The common practice is to hydraulically fra fracture the shale formation to open conduits for flow. The five conditions that make fractures and formations possible are single shear strength, dual shear strength, triple shear strength, strain energy density, and maximum tension stress strength. Shear stress is the component of stress coplanar with the material's cross section. 
The most accepted of these conditions are the single shear strength principle and the maximum tension stress. Young's modulus, shear strain modulus, volumetric elastic modulus, and Poisson's ratio are used to interpret elastic deformation of rocks. Young's modulus is used to help with rock tensile strength, the shear strain modulus for sh shear strength, the volumetric elastic modulus for the compressive strength, and Poisson's ratio for the lateral relative compressibility. The total organic content in shale is an important factor for natural fractures. Shale that has high contents of organic matter and quartz have less tensile strength, are more brittle, and are more susceptible to create natural and induced fractures under external forces. These factors are beneficial for the dispersal of shale gas, free gas accumulation, and flow. If a shale has a high matrix of quartz, feldspar, and carbonate, it will have a low Poisson's ratio, high Young's modulus, and high brittleness. Well-developed fractures are common in shale with a high total organic content and under abnormally high pressures. The higher the content, the more micropores are in the shale matrix, which makes more microfractures and the higher gas enrichment. Tectonic factors are another aspect of natural fractures. Tectonic fractures are formed due to the concentration and release of tectonic stresses. The area of the shale with the greater stress variation gradient will be more likely to produce fractures over a time with equal stress variations. Abnormally high pressure fractures are formed in multiple steps. Small fractures are formed first and continuously extend by later rupture. These form larger vertical fractures with a large number of micro fractures occurring along with some shear fractures. Abnormally high fluid pressures are due to a combination of reasons including clay mineral conversion and dehydration, hydrocarbon generation, hydrothermal pressurizing, and cementation. Abnormally high pressure fractures occur when an excessive fluid pressure is one half to one third of matrix pressure. Generally, only gas accumulated in interconnected pores and fracture networks is producible, whereas absorptive gas trapped in micro and nanopores within the shell matrix is not producible. When fractures are present, gas diffuses from micropores in the shale matrix to the large pores and fractures following Darcy's law. However, the Darcy equation cannot be used for fine-grained shale strata because of nanopores. In the case of nanopores, both non-continuum effects and dominant surface interactive forces become important, reserving the use of Darcy flow. Adsorptive gas on the pore surface in the matrix may also be desorbed under certain pressures, and Darcy flow is also not applicable. Without natural fractures, gas is trapped in matrix pores of shales and is not economically recoverable. Economically recoverable shale gas volume ultimately depends on the fracture currents, density, combination feature, and openings in the reservoir. Natural fracture networks provide migration channels and accumulation space for natural gas and formation water. This increases the total free gas accumulation in the shale. When fracture size, density, and or occurrence is too great, gas may be dissipated to certain environments and can ultimately be counterproductive to reservoir flow and production. More fractures and a high dispersed trend correspond to higher gas production. Open, mutually perpendicular natural fractures or numerous sets of natural fractures will increase shale gas production. Areas with poorly developed fracture networks have low or no gas production. Flow through fractures is difficult to analyze due to ex the extremely small size of the pores. Theoretical models for permeability have been developed but due to several distinct characteristics of gas shales, it is not applicable. These characteristics include irregular fracture networks, poor connectivity of fracture networks, and fractures may also be filled with minerals. An ideal situation is flow through parallel fractures. This situation is governed by Darcy's Law and Poisset's equation for flow. Due to irregular geometry, the flow path of natural fractures in shale is often tortuous. The capacity for flow will decrease as the fractures become more torturous, so to estimate the permeability in gas shales, torturosity must be accounted for. In gas shale, some fractures are not effective paths for conducting fluid flow. Fractures may lead to a dead end or may also merge into other fractures. These connectivity issues can have a great effect on the permeability of gas shales. If shale has high contents of quartz, feldspar, and carbonate, it will have a low Poisson's ratio high Young's modulus, and a high brittleness. Fracture development generally has a positive correlation with the proportion of brittle minerals and shale. 
Fractures are well developed in shale with high total organic content or under abnormally high pressure. Fractures provide migration conduits and accumulation space for natural gas. There is a positive correlation between fracture development, total gas accumulation, and free gas volume. Flow through fractures can be measured through estimates of permeability. Permeability can be estimated by aperture length of fractures and the assumption of homogeneous fracture characteristics is necessary.